we're going to talk about Brexit because it is, as I say, seven years since that historic vote. A majority of people voting for us to leave the EU, which we eventually did in 2020. Brexit means Brexit, says uh, said Theresa May. Get Brexit done, said Boris Johnson. Peter Edwards is the former editor of Labour List and Henry Bolton is the former leader of UKIP there with me today. Hello to you both. Um, Peter, maybe I could start with you and say uh, today we have this uh, couple of polls actually, uh, the most recent one, uh, data showing that 58% of people would re-enter the EU. Uh, presumably you think we got it wrong in 2016 and presumably you are uh, heartened by this polling today. But are we going to? I mean, surely this historic break has happened. Going back in is, is unthinkable, isn't it? It's unthinkable in the short term, and I voted Remain, but ultimately I do accept the, the result of the referendum. Good man. Glad so, to hear it. So, so I'm not cock a hoop. There, there was this massive vote. Brexit has been a disaster, and I may correct you, Theresa May didn't say Brexit means Brexit. She said Brexit means breakfast, and that, that slip of the tongue was a sign of the problems really we had from day one. We are all poorer as a result of Brexit, but no, I, I don't think we can go back in any time soon, even as public support, because there isn't an appetite for another referendum. Referendum. And just think how divisive the last one was and the fallout that followed. Totally agree with the, the point in terms of how divisive it was. Henry, was it worth it? Have we taken back control of our laws, our money on our borders? Are you happy with Brexit as it stands? No, I'm not, Peter. Look, I mean, Brexit was never in itself. Le the, the actual act of leaving the institutions of the European Union was never in itself going to take control of our borders or anything else. What it did was give us the f independence in law, government and public administration to make our own decisions about how we govern ourselves in those sort of areas. For example, borders, trade and so on. Um, now, what we failed to do, what successive governments have failed to do since then, the May government, the, the, the Johnson government, the Trust government, the Sunak government, so far... It's quite a few to remember. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, of course, people are going to say, well, they're all conservative part, uh, governments or whatever. But I don't care about that. I don't think any party would be any better. The thing is that not one politician has actually gone up and actually presented a vision for post-Brexit Britain. They didn't do that before the referendum. I was calling for it. The reason I stood for the leadership of UKIP was to turn the party into a constructive contributor in, in exactly that way. What should the vision be? Because without a vision, you can't have a coherent direction. Henry, I, Henry I, I, I totally agree with you. Last night on Question Time on the BBC, mm -hmm. they had an audience full of people who voted, every single person, I think, in the audience anyway, the idea was that there would be people who all voted for Brexit in 2016. And the question is, you know, do, do, was that the right decision, all the rest of it. And of the panellists, they had, uh, you know, Ramona in chief, uh, Alistair Campbell, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, talked about all the lies that were told in the Brexit campaign. Obviously, he is a paragon of virtue and would never, ever tell us a lie about, you know, going to war in Iraq and killing hundreds of thousands of innocent people illegally. Um, but at the same time, the government failed to put a, a person up on that panel. I think if you're going to say, look, wh whatever you think of it, we have Brexit. It is, it is, it is a fact of life. Let's make it work. Where is that vision, Henry? Where? Well, it's, I mean, we've got, it's Rishi, not there. We've got Rishi it's, Sunak. Peter, it's not there. I, but, but we've got Rishi Sunak. I, I'm agreeing with you, Henry. We've got Rishi Sunak, who I think genuinely actually has always been a Brexiteer and genuinely mm -hmm. believes in it in, in a way that actually Liz Truss didn't. She was a Remainer in 2016. Yet Rishi Sunak has not come out and saying, this is my vision. Look, Peter, I, I, I've had, I have had literally blazing rows, shouting arguments with... with people who are very no well known on the Brexiteer leadership side, that actually we needed to have this, that we needed detail. I was told, no, nobody's interested in the detail, nobody cares about the detail. I was passionately, and still am, of the view that you, it's the detail that makes a success of it. Now, I believe Brexit did what we wanted it to do. It gave us that independence to make decisions about our own governance, to take our own decisions, bespoke decisions about our own opportunities and how to address the risks that we face. We have done virtually none of that because there is no vision. And I think that has been a massive, massive failure on the Brexit side. So Brexit worked. Am I happy? No, because there has been a total lack of vision, total lack of leadership, total lack of zeal and a, and a lack of sense of urgency over this. It's not 
to do with Brexit. It's to do with the quality of our own politicians. And I would put that... To, that's, I'm not being party political there. I would say there is not one single politician, leading politician in this nation of any political party that I would trust to provide that vision well, well, and that well, direction. Well, let's, let's put that to Peter Edwards, because this is interesting, isn't it? You have Keir Starmer, if the polls are to be believed, going to be the next Prime Minister of this country in probably a year's time, just over a year's time. We're in a situation where he, of course, was against Brexit. He wanted to have a second referendum. Uh, then he decided, actually, no, we're going to make Brexit work. But in terms of a post-Brexit vision, whether you talk about Brexit or whether you don't, can Keir Starmer convince people that actually, if he is Labour leader, if he's Prime Minister of this country, he, he, he's doing it sort of more in sorrow than in anger, that he, he doesn't actually want to rejoin the EU? Or maybe actually he has a, a very difficult line to tread. What do you, how do you sort of assess that situation as someone who knows the Labour Party inside out, Peter? Well, Labour aren't counting their chickens. And I must say, you had a bit of a cheap shot about, about Alistair Campbell, which wasn't terribly fair. But in terms It wasn't of, fair. Yeah. But it in, wasn't fair. Yeah, I mean, if you... If Why you, was it not fair? Because if you read his diaries, as I have, you'll see he's... he's Con convulsed by doubt over any suggestion he'd uh, misled the lobby at times. So he may have got judgment points wrong, but I, Peter, don't, I don't believe he's a liar at all. He's a total liar. Uh, he is someone who uh, promoted Tony Blair's lies, which brought us into war in Iraq, which was illegal. Uh, Tony Blair should be in The Hague and should be in prison uh, as uh, convicted in the International Criminal Court and his acolytes include Alistair Campbell uh, for doing so and promoting that agenda and he lied to Parliament. But let's talk about Brexit. He lied last back. night as well. He uh, lied last night. He lied on question, question time as well. He said that the nation was told that it was all going to be sunlit uplands after Brexit. That's an uh, and, and there was none of this sort of the, the downside of it was mentioned at all. That's a blatant let, lie. Uh, do, do what, look, look, Alistair, I'm sure Alistair Campbell will defend himself against the charges I've put to him and you've put to him as well, Henry. But let's let's tell you what, Peter. We'll invite you on another time to talk about Iraq. Let's let's stick to Brexit for the meantime, if you don't mind. Tell us your assessment of Keir Starmer and all this. He has to regain trust, and I think he has. And I actually think it's only his opponents that really want to bring back uh, the Corbyn manifesto. Most people, and I knock on doors regularly, are not talking about it. There weren't many opportunities, and whatever there were around Brexit, um, they've largely slipped out of our grasp. It's all going to be about economic growth. That's true at every general election. It's true when you're in an inflation crisis like now, and it's true when it looks like there being a change of government and there's been so much growth foregone. I also want to pick up another one of Henry's points, which is you either have people who think... I think um, Brexit's been fantastic and everything's going brilliantly, but it's a dwindling band. Or you have Brexiteers who say Brexit will be great, but we haven't done it properly. But ironically, that is the defence of Leninists and Trotskyists for communism. They say, although this has failed in every respect, it's only because we haven't done it properly, not because it's a bad idea. Brexit as delivered has been a bad idea. I respect the outcome of the vote. I don't want another referendum, but the economy is 4% smaller. And that's not my opinion. That is the independent I mean, the, the, verdict of the OBR. Absolutely, those are absolutely fair points from Peter Edwards, are they not, Henry Bolton? I, I, I don't think they are. I mean, you know, I'm far from being a Leninist or a Trotsky. I'm not, I don't think he was I mean, implying you are, but there we are. <laughs> no, um, but, you know, just the simple fact. I mean, if Peter could say, right, somebody's put up a vision and it's not adequate or it's the wrong one, then I might agree with him. But there has been no vision. I mean, I, I've stood up and I've for years now, I've said the vision should be of a confident, optimistic, prosperous and secure, outward looking trading nation that is respected by its friends and allies abroad and whose people are proud to be called British. Now, that's a vision. It's broad. It's strategic. It's national. But. It then it, every single policy should align to that, should be justified against the delivery that it has contributing towards achieving that. Now, if you can't con justify a policy or a decision in that in those terms, then it's irrelevant. But Henry, that's all a bit woolly, isn't it? I'm afraid there, there's it's no one who's woolly. against. Just let him, Henry, let him speak. Let him speak. Peter Edwards. Yeah, th there's no one against these things like economic growth or independence or self determination. There, there, there aren't hordes of people on the streets campaigning against economic growth, other than perhaps in Liz Truss's yeah. mind. I want to take on this constitutional point briefly because I think it's a bit of a nonsense. When we're in inflation crisis, would we rather? have a warm glow of our constitutional freedoms or a warm glow of actually being richer but in fact we've got the cold chill of an inflation crisis inflation at 10%. Inflation crisis so, let, let, let him respond Brexit. peter henry the, henry go ahead the inflation, the inflation crisis i mean there might be some brexit impact because 
it is Brexit implies change. It is change. Any change has a degree of disruption. It's called the J curve. You go into the period of disruption and you come out the other side as you stabilise again. It's like moving house or moving a job. When will the yes, period of disruption but, end? But, but, but well, 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 that's where the planning comes. And I tell you what, Peter, the problem is, and what it sounds as though you don't grasp either, I'm sorry, is strategy. Everybody wants to have a policy for this, a policy for that. How do we deal with inflation? How do we deal with trade? How do we... All separate. The fact of the matter is that I don't see anybody talking about national strategy, joining up the efforts of all government departments and efforts behind a vision. If you don't have the vision, you don't have the direction. If you don't have the direction, you can't establish coherence. And if you can't establish coherence, you've got incoherent activities and policies going on. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, Henry, and I see Henry, that from Henry, everybody. Henry, thank you. Final word to Peter Edwards, please. Well, everything we've heard from Henry, and he's a very passionate advocate for his case, but he hasn't actually mentioned one policy that he, the failed politicians um, he criticises could actually deliver. And that's to me because Brexit is this uh, vague, neg negligible dream of something that might happen in the future. But we've had seven years discussion. of paralysis, and I suspect it will continue. Gentlemen, thank you so much. We